Hello, everyone. Welcome to my video tutorial for microbiome data analysis. So there are lots of packages you can use to analyze microbiome data, but the Phenosec is the most frequently used package. So I'm going to show you how to use this package to analyze microbiome data. So first we can load the Phenosec package, and this package has four demonstration data set. We can load one data set to have a look at the data structure of Phenosec object. So we can use the global patterns data set as example. Let's load the data. And we can click the data. You can see for a classic Phenosec S4 object, it has five data slots. So the first one is the OTO table. The second one is the text table. The third data slot is the sample data. Then the fourth data slot is the phenogenetic tree. And the last one is the reference sequencing data. So you can see in this demonstration data set, we have the OTU text sample data and also the phenogenetic tree, but we don't have the reference sequencing data. You can see here it is now. Because we are going to use DA DA2 package to pre-process the raw reading fast Q files for the microbiome sequencing data. Because the DADA2 sequence inference method is reference free, that's why we don't need a reference data in the phenosec object. So in the first part of my video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a phenosec object. I see that we have four data slot here, OTU table, text table, sample data and the phenogenetic tree. So I'm going to use four steps to show you how to generate each data table. Then in the fifth step, we can use the data table to create a phenosec object. So the first step is to create a OTU table. So we will start from the raw reading fast files. And we are going to use the DADA2 package to pre-process the sequencing data. So the data I'm going to use is the same data set that has been used on the online tutorial. So this is a data set generated from the mouse gut. And the data has 362 paired reading for the V4 region of the 16srna. So you can use this link to download the data and unzip the data. I downloaded already, you can see it is in my folder. This is the original name when you download the data. You can see in the folder we have the sample name pair sequencing data R1 and R2. So R1 is the forward sequencing data, and the R2 is the reverse sequencing data for the same sample. You can see in this folder, I also created an empty folder named the filter rate. We can click and have a look. You can see it is empty. Okay, so I showed you the data folder. Now we can start the analysis. So if you haven't installed the package, you can use the bio manager to install both PhenoSeq and DADA2 packages. So first we are going to set the files pass. I showed you the data that I downloaded in this folder. We can set the files pass. And we can have a look at the files in this folder. I showed you already. 
we have 362 higher the sequence in reading in this folder they are six fast clear files and the ones I showed you we have an empty folder named the filter rate and this is the folder we are going to see the filtered files so we can set the filtered files pass into that folder if we have a look at the files in that folder at the moment you can see it is empty so next we can separate the forward and the reverse files i should you already the forward files will be r1 and the reverse files will be r2 for each sample so let's separate the forward and the reverse samples so we should have 362 samples in the forward files and also 362 reverse files. So first let's have a look at the sequencing quantity use the plot quantity profile function. For demonstration, we just plot the first and the second sequencing data. First we can plot the first and the second sequencing data for the forward sequencing let's uh, make the plot okay you can see we generated uh, two plots for the forward sequencing data because they are r1 then you can see from here for illumina data sequencing always the first thing is not a good quantity then here for the forward sequencing sample, you can see once they nearly reach 250 base pair, then the quality dropped dramatically. So later we can trim the sequencing data for the forward lens from 10 to 245. Next, we can have a look at the sequencing quality for the reverse sequencing let's make the plots again okay you can see we generated the two plots for the, the quality of reverse sequencing for the first and the second data set so you can see from here it is the same for the reverse sequencing data the first 10 sequence the quantity is not very good then for the reverse sequencing data you can see when the sequencing length is around 150 then the quantity is dropped dramatically this is the characteristic for illumina sequencing the quantity for reverse sequencing is lower than the forward sequencing so to set the parameter for trim the data you can see here we are going to set the parameter for trimming the reverse sequencing from 10 to 160 so before we trim and filter the data we set the files pass again to save the filter the data in the filter files pass that's the folder i showed you it is an empty folder to save the filtered sequencing data. So let's set the files pass for the forward sequencing, then reverse sequencing. So now we can run the fast paired filter function to trim and filter the sequencing data for each paired sequencing. And I showed you already the parameter here. We set the left trim as 10, then the truncated length will be 245 for forward sequencing, then 160 for reverse sequencing. There are other parameters we can set here. Uh, you can see, for example, this one is the maximum expect error we set as 2. So now we can run the function to trim and uh, filter the data. Let's run. 
So it will be a ticked well to filter the trim or the data set. So the program is running. If you have a look at my folder in the filter rate folder, now you can see we are adding the filtered files in this folder. Once the trim and the filter function finished, then we can go to next step of analysis. Okay, you can see we finished the trim and the filter step for all the fast queue files. So I'm going to stop from here for today's demonstration. In my next video, I'm going to show the rest of the step to prepare the OTU table. So I hope to see you in my next video tutorial.